Okay, so here we go. Round two. Today, you are not gonna f this up. You're gonna film how you set up your gear. You're gonna show some nice slide shots on your bookshelf so we'll have to guess which books you're gonna show in the video. Exactly like that. That's right. Now we'll have no idea we'll show up. Wait. Stop. Oh, you never seem to learn. Hey YouTube, this is Jorgen Comic Center. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And today we're gonna do another top 10 list. This is gonna be my top 10 independent comic books. So stay tuned. The video before this was my top 10 favorite graphic novels. And therefore some of them are also gonna be shown in this video. So. I was thinking that I'll show you those books right away. First up is We Free by Grant Morrison. This is a truly loving story about three animals, a cat, a dog, and a rabbit, or bunny rabbit. And it's about how they are exposed to human testings and everything and are being made into assassins, basically and you follow them on their mission and their adventure to try to escape the clutches of man. The reason why this is on my top 10 is because it is a very emotional ending to it or a story overall for it. And it's only three issues thick, but it really catches you already by the second issue, I would say. And that is why this is on my top 10 list. The second book that I'm going to show you is also from the top 10 graphic novel list and that is published by Vertigo and it's Day Tripper by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Bath. This is also a very emotional story as it deals with death in each and every issue. The ending of it always catches you and I would recommend this to actually anyone that wants to read something other than superheroes and maybe something more down to earth and a more heavy subject matter. So that is also why this is in my top 10 because it doesn't uh, steer away from talking about something that happens every day. And the third book that I'm gonna show you is the final one that I'm gonna try to keep short on but I want to talk more about all the other books that is coming up. But this is V for Vendetta. This is a book by Alan Moore. No, I am not going to show you Watchmen in this video either, because I see it more as a DC book. So if I'll do my top 10 DC series, who knows, maybe it'll show up in that. But V for Vendetta, I think is a very strong independent series as it is published by Vertigo. The message in V for Vendetta I think is very strong as it comes to the dealing between people and their governments. Just really like the both in the movie format with Hugo Weaving and uh, Natalie Portman as well as the Alan Moore graphic novel. So now we're caught up with all of the books that overlapped with the top 10 graphic novels list. Because I thought that it would, wouldn't make any sense to leave those books out just because this is another top 10 list. They are still independent work, so yeah. But now I'm going to show you some books that I haven't shown in previous videos. And this first series is a pretty big one, but maybe a little controversial. It is the Walking Dead series and The Walking Dead written by Robert Kirkman I have followed it this on the compendium format which is the thickest format out there to my belief I believe the second biggest format out there is the omnibus format this packs a whole bunch of 48 issues per volume except for the very last one I believe this is one of the very first independent comic books that I actually picked up because it was a very good price for the material that you got. The first printing here has a cost of $59.99. Uh, so 
that was very price-worthy for me back then when I just got into the hobby and this introduced me to a great series to want to pick up other independent comic books because I thought that if this is as good as it is there must be something other out there that I'll enjoy as well and I found a lot of stuff but of course The Walking Dead if you haven't heard of the comic book series you might have seen the TV show but if you're on this channel you probably heard about the comic book so uh, this is a very controversial series because many people do believe that or think that the series dips after issue number 48 which is after the prison story arc and I can agree to some degree but I think it picks itself up again in volume 3 but it, the reason why I love the series is because of the human elements within it and it, it, it's, it's good drama in, in my opinion and that's why I kept all of my companions all the way through and waited and waited for each and every volume to be released. I have not read Walking Dead in any other format than the Compendium, which of course, with it being the thickest format, has been a drag to wait out to, for them to release all of the four volumes collecting the whole series. But in the end, I'm very happy that I did so and that is also why this is on my top 10 list because it has influenced me to pick up so many other series within Image and Vertigo. One of the comic book series that I picked up after having read the first volume of Walking Dead was this Image series, Morning Glories. Check the label and it's an image, but then the hardcover format itself was very intriguing for me. And behind the dust jacket, it sort of looks like a yearbook of some kind. One of the series that I picked up after reading The Walking Dead was this one, The Morning Glories. This is yet another controversial series because this has been compared to the Lost series. Lost is also a very controversial series in itself, so yeah. It's uh, really fitting to be compared to that because the cliffhangers within this series is incredible. I cannot stop reading this once I get started. With that said, I've only read through the first three hardcover volumes once. But that is just because it is on a hiatus right now, or it's on a break, or maybe it'll never be finished. But I love this series just because how it gets me going and reading each issue after the next. If a series makes you do that, they're doing something right, even though you think that there's something wrong with it. It's written by Nick Spencer, which of course is the current writer on The Amazing Spider-Man right now at Marvel. And in here he truly shows what he can do, but of course also the work isn't finished. But still, as I said, it's a very strong series as it makes me go on and on reading about each and every issue. This next series that I'm going to show you is from Vertigo and it's one of the longer Vertigo series and one that I truly, truly love and that is Fables. The Fables series published up to 15 hardcovers and I was very lucky to get a hold of them as I wanted to read everything and I don't think I even started reading it until I had them all, but I could be mistaken. This series is of course about magical beings coming into our world, but still maintaining their magical capabilities. So imagine yourself, the whole world of Disney princesses and stories and fairy tales coming into our world. Manhattan, New York to be more exact, them trying to hide away from this darker force that has taken over the magic lands and them trying to start a new life in our world. That aspect got me hooked right away and I couldn't wait to see which characters I was about to meet. Of course there were a lot of characters that I didn't recognize as I hadn't read a lot of fairy tales in my younger days. But I think the biggest surprise for me was that the big bad wolf was the main antagonist in this series. 
This series leads on into a great adventure when it comes to all from separate characters up until the big whole event on why these creatures and princes and princesses has escaped into our world. The series develops a lot of characters that we've seen in the movies and gives them a third plane and not making them as two-dimensional as they might seem in their own movies. Then of course we cannot forget Snow White which plays a huge part within this series and the relationships that she builds up in this series. I just love it all and I can't wait to reread Fables once again. Next book it's another image book and this is also written by Robert Kirkman. So you can pretty much guess what I'm gonna show you probably. Invincible. Invincible is actually now getting an animated series on Amazon if you haven't noticed but if you're into that you should check it out as it seems by the trailer judging from it be very very close to the source material not to mention the great voice casting but when it comes to the comic book itself it's about Mark Grayson and his father Omni-Man and through the series it's like the best superhero drama I've read since reading The Amazing Spider-Man by JMS or Dan Sloft. And if you know how big of a Spider-Man fan I am, you know that is big praise for this book. The Invincible series takes up all of the cliches of superhero books, at the same time it reinvents them and makes them even better. The dialogue of it can seem very... Brian Michael Bendis-esque. I know that can be a turnoff for some of you, but in my opinion that is high praise as well as I see Brian Michael Bendis writing like a fluent TV show dialogue. The type of TV show that you do not pay half your attention to the TV show and half your attention to watching Instagram or Twitter. Because when I read these books, these books do not get put down until I've read the very last issue within the book. That is how I read this through and through with each and every volume that came out. I think when I started reading Invincible, the first six or seven volumes had been released and it was a struggle for me to wait and wait for each and every of the upcoming hardcovers to be released. Of course now the series is finished with a great ending. It didn't span on forever as other series could have but it found solid ground with its ending. Of course, every series has its dips now and then, but for what it is, I think this is one of the best drama series that I've read and also one of the best superhero comics that I've read. Next book is another series much like Morning Glories that has not been finished yet, or it is actually finished, but I have not read the last volume of the series at, as it comes out this fall. But the series that I'm talking about is Big Heart Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. Actually, it was just called Sex Criminals as it was published within single issues, but when collected within this oversized hardcover, it's Big Heart Sex Criminals for mature readers. Duh. They actually went so far with this that if you take off the dust jacket of the book, you get the cover for Down Boy. If you would ever read this in public and hope to God that nobody watches over your shoulder to see actual panels, they wouldn't know what you're reading about. They would think you're reading about how to neuter your pets or something. But the thing that I love about Sex Criminals isn't just the funny jokes and situations that the two main characters get into with it, but it is the actual the sexual exploring the characters also make as they meet up other characters within the series. If the series is any correct with how they describe different sexualities, it has really helped me to understand other people within my own life when it comes to their sexuality and I think that is thanks to this book and that is also why this is in my top 10 list not only for the funny jokes as I said but it has had 
have helped me to understand other people within my life and actually ask them is this how you feel sometimes and so that is something that is truly valuable for me when it comes to comic books as not only do I get a entertaining time but you also learn something who knew now the second to last book to show you this is one of the omnibus and it is preacher this is only volume one volume two is on its way to be released but i assure you i have read the whole series in the standard hardcover size format but i want to upgrade it into this one as it uh, lowers my total number of books within the collection so that's how i think about this but uh, about the series itself i love it uh, i recently finished the tv series of it and the adaptation i would say is very faithful but it jumbles around a bit with the storylines and makes them play out in a bit of a different order of things and some of the some things they totally make up but i was totally fine with that but when it comes to the comic book itself uh, this is one of the very first things that I read by Garth Ennis and the man is crazy and also I really like the art by Steve Dillon I don't think many other people would have mustered the very things that Steve Dillon wanted him to draw in the series so if you haven't read Preacher it's about this preacher that gets possessed by a half angel, half demon uh, spirit and gets the ability of the word of God. And since he feels that God has abandoned him and his town, he goes out to a journey to find God and gonna ask him, why have you abandoned us? And that hook got me all the way through the series and very well worth so now before i show you this last book i just want to remind you all to subscribe and click on the like button and hit the bell so that you won't miss when i put up another vote for the next top 10 list for us to watch and who knows maybe it'll be your pick next time we have seen my top 10 graph novels we've seen my top 10 independent series at least soon so next up maybe it'll be my top 10 marvel top 10 dc omnibus or maybe favorites top 10 spider-man runs or top 10 batman or maybe you have another suggestion you can put that in the comments down below but now the last book and the final series is going to be another vertigo series and this is written by brian k vaughn so vertigo not image it's not saga it's why the last man so why why the last man well this is just a emotional journey all in all this series like so many others that i've read in the beginning of my collecting days I just couldn't put it down when I had it first in the deluxe size format. I read volume after volume and I couldn't stop. I think I finished it off within three or four days and it was just incredible. The second time around reading the series was in this omnibus format and it was within two days maybe and I got so attached once again to all of these characters particularly ampersand of course the monk you have to see in this picture why the last man all of the men on planet earth dies except for the main character yorick brown and his pet monkey ampersand so they go out in the world to see what has actually happened as well as trying to find his girlfriend which is on the other side of the earth and with that pitch like so many others, I went through the whole series and loved it. Of course, there are other great independent comic book series out there that I do love, but these 10 hit the hardest when it comes to my feelings and how it has affected my life in some way. Of course, some honorable mentions would be Animal Man by Grant Morrison, 
and Irredeemable by Mark Wade. But I feel that those are closer to the superhero genre universes. Of course, I showed you Invincible, so what am I talking about? But I just feel when it comes to Animal Man by Grant Morrison, it'll sh surely show up in one or two videos in the future. But I just want you to know it has been very difficult to make these top 10 lists. I really need to put my thought into it. But I thank so much for joining me in all of these videos. So as I said before, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and the like button. A comment would be nice because I love this comic book community. And that is why I try to make more weekly videos right now, or at least monthly. I try my best. I'm still a student and exams are coming up by the beginning of the summer. But hey, that's not your problem. You just want to enjoy the content on this channel. And I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.